Funding for this program was made possible by the members of WQED and the Allegheny Regional Asset District, with additional support from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Thank you. The experience of going to war is this timeless experience. This isn't a game, this isn't something that's fun, and you signed up for this. When I came home, it was a much different scenario than when I left. I feel like I'm part of the greatness that is America. When these warriors come home, people think that we've lost our will, but we haven't. It's just been tucked away, and we've been trying to hide things for so long because we're warriors. You have to have that drive. You have to want to get better. Nobody can make you better but yourself. All too often you hear the negative stories of veterans coming home from war and there's a lot of us doing positive things and those are the stories that need to be heard. Personally I wanted to serve going in but whenever you get out you find that you still have that inner feeling of wanting to serve. I realized that there were other missions out there, and it fills that void for me. When I'm running, it allows me time to clear my head. My favorite place to run is the Montour Trail. This was a, an old railroad trail. There was still a use for it after the railroad industry had, had left. And that's kind of what I see as myself as a veteran. It's a perfect day for the road. I was always interested in the military ever since I was a young child. My grandfather, he was in the Marines. My brother's now a Marine, and all my cousins are Marines. We'll take it easy. We'll take I left uh, October 15, 2001 for boot camp. I'm often reminded of a quote from T.S. Eliot that says, We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. I left Pittsburgh to become a Marine and with it, a personal exploration in Iraq and Afghanistan. During my first tour in Iraq, I noticed that I didn't know a lot of the history or the culture or the language. And I wanted to learn how this area had come to this point. As you keep researching, you just find new pockets and new branches of, of history that all led to the state of the world that you're living in. When I was in, you know, you're, you're kind of huddled together and you're, you're part of this unit and that unit becomes your identity. And whenever you're out, it becomes something that, that you're constantly missing. Upon returning to this city, I began to know it as well as myself for the first time. Starry eyes and cellophane, she takes her walk, she makes her plan. I noticed there was a large homeless population in Pittsburgh. A lot of them claim to be veterans. As I began researching the problem of uh, veterans' homelessness, I was attracted to Veterans Place of Washington Boulevard. We service about 200 homeless veterans a year, and we get them off the street, and, and we begin to figure out, you know, what happened, why are you homeless, and where can we go and use our resources and, and get you back on your feet. Each unit will uh, house five veterans, but each veteran gets their own bedroom and their own bed and all their own amenities. Maybe I'll write you from the other side. I started noticing a lot of my friends began to pass away that I served in the Marine Corps with. And I kind of looked and said, is there anything that I can do to, to change the trajectory here. And so that's where I met General Jones, who had started a, a camp called Semper Fi Odyssey, 
where he was bringing up Marines and soldiers and helping them uh, transition back into civilian life. Serving my fellow veterans at Semper Fi Odyssey and Veterans Place began to fill that gap that I knew that I was missing. To ask the question why we live and then we die, I think I'm fine. Maybe I'll write you from the other side. I saw a city repurposed from manufacturing to technology. I saw factories transformed into residences, railroads into trails, and basements into boxing gyms. And just as we transform our surroundings, we can also transform ourselves. I remember really enjoying whenever I was in the Marines, was waking up at the same time every day, going out for a run, working out, and coming back, and, and then starting your day. Once I get back on that regiment, then I can successfully take on the tasks that I need to throughout the day. As a veteran returning home, you never cease from exploring yourself, your skills, or your talents. You are best fitted to take those aspects that made you a good soldier, sailor, airman, or marine, and use them to succeed in other occupations. And that way, you can begin to truly know yourself for the first time. There's a reason that you joined the military, and that was out of a desire to serve, and that that desire to serve doesn't end at the end of your enlistment, and that there's still a need for people who want to give back and serve their community. did art as far back as I can remember. You look up with those angel eyes. He said, I remember what I'm fighting for. Oh, the victory cannot be denied. You're the fire in my bones. I think when I was a teenager, I didn't care about the farm or what was going on there. I didn't appreciate it but going away and coming back and having my kids and giving them that same kind of like gift that my parents gave me, that was really important. <laughs> Elise and my son Roger John were deployed 14 months for Elise and Roger was there for uh, 10 months. So they were both there together and those were a lot of sleepless nights for my wife and, and for me. Deployment, particularly in a combat zone, will change everybody. Um, and she did come back changed. Elise always has had an independent streak, always has marched to the beat of her own drummer. Art is this physical act that allows me to work through and untangle and unpack. The experience of going to war is this timeless experience. When I came back and started to process these things, I think that's what I was really tapping into. This story, this vast oceanic narrative of people who fight and go to war. My dad was always a natural artist. I saw that in Elise immediately. His creativity and his ability was innate in her. Even though I had that art in me, I knew I could always come back to it. I grew up with a dad and a brother who were always messing around with trucks and guns, and I just really wanted that on my own, on my own terms. I was just always drawn to that, and a tomboy, and I was like, I'm gonna go do this. I dropped out of art school after 9-11. I joined as a heavy wheel vehicle mechanic. It kind of makes sense that our solar... I went back to grad school for art, and I had this close-knit community of artists who were like, there's nothing wrong with you letting your guard down and sharing your story. Everything changed after that. The art that I make now, post-war, is very different from what I made in art school before I joined. 
this piece is the piece that was um, done for Rethink Vets. I called it the thing that we used to hold everything together. I filled them with things that reminded me of certain landscapes. And this is just kind of what I imagine if we applied ritual to medicine, this is what I pictured it looking like. I'm a morning person, so I like to get out here before I do anything. It's really special. This is like my vacation. This is where my mind is always coming back to. It's not just a building, you know? It's where all the magic happens. All my experiences in the military and life condense down into the body. Like, what can the body say about what it's been through, what it goes through? And so my work is figural because I believe in the patriotism of the human body. I think this is the last refuge of individualism. It's the last place where you're truly free. I've just been putting portals on everything. It's not enough to just make work and pile it up in the rafters. I want to share it with people and I want to make connections. I think being an installation artist kind of goes hand in hand with that because it's not just about art on the wall. It's about how it smells, how it feels, how it looks with everything else around it. It's using all the senses. I love the way my kids smell after they come in from being outside. Like a country kid has a smell, like they just smell like dirt and air and it's just on their hair and it's so amazing. Home smells like so many different things. It's just like nothing else. There were traumatic experiences overseas that create tenseness. You're constantly alert. Being constantly alert and coming back to home life is very confusing. Boxing physically, it helps us to heal. Once the body starts to heal, the mind starts to heal. I was born and raised in Ambridge. I was a police officer in the military. I joined in 2001. I was a heavy weapons gunner. We worked with coalition forces from Latvia, from Australia. V was my assistant gunner. What I fought for was she knew I spoke very little English. She was so enlightened. There's a bond that is unbreakable when you're going through things that you see in war. So for him to end up being my assistant gunner in life, I can't ask for a better person to go through life in. That's how it all began because uh, me and Brenda, we kind of had a bad start too. Hey. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? The deployment itself was probably the heaviest on our hearts. We moved back home and I had suffered from severe PTSD. I was edgy all the time. V said, Brandy, you're angry all the time. You're drinking a lot. All these things, when I came back, he started noticing and he said, you're miserable. We're miserable, we're falling apart. We need you to find an outlet. What did you like to do? I said, I used to like boxing. I found boxing from my father. He kind of knew I was a tomboy and he would always invite me to, to come box with him. Spending that time with him when I was little and his guidance, I didn't just learn how to box, I learned so many other things while we were sharing that time together. We went to a local boxing club. At about six months, I think that was the turning point where I said, holy cow, I found this magic pill and it's boxing and it's camaraderie and I think we need to share this with other veterans. And so quit our jobs and started a boxing club. <laughs> People that come down there are veterans 
first responders, police, EMT, we have firefighters, emergency nurses, dispatchers, and then the community. Everyone's relaxed and it's hard to feel that way, especially if you're fighting PTSD. It's not just about boxing. People come in there and they're, they don't want to box, but they want that camaraderie. For me, Warrior Call's boxing is it's inspirational. We've never boxed before, so coming here and being treated like family, besides being a good workout, they just make you feel at home. How's it feeling? Tish came in, she was a mess. VA basically was telling her, there's nothing more that we can do for you. Emotionally, I was wrecked. I was on 23 different psychiatric medications. My marriage was on the rocks. I weighed almost 400 pounds. I've been coming just about every day. They push you. For 13 years, I searched for a magical pill. The camaraderie that you get when you come to this gym, that's right. your magic Take your pill. Time. Take your time. Do my kids box with me? Yes, they do. Down, out, in, like this, down. So we have kids class, and they'll go down and they'll box with the other kids. Nina is probably the best on the speed bag. She loves the speed bag. Nico and Vlad, they're great on the heavy bags. They like working the mitts. And I think they like the idea that they're a part of helping people. We are by no means counselors. We're just a, another veteran that understands what they're going through. So to be a part of helping veterans and first responders in Pennsylvania, priceless, wonderful feeling. Woodworking for me is calming, cathartic. The way to certain aspects of it to kind of be a meditation. My grandfather and that side of the family, they had their own sawmill. My grandfather also had a wood shop and we were always exposed to that. He really instilled that want and desire for woodworking at a, at a very young age. What I love most about working with the wood is that the, the shape that it can kind of decide where it wants to go. We can see a piece of wood and say, okay, well, I want to make a certain piece of furniture. But this board really does kind of speak as a soul of, of, of itself. Does a tree want to be a, a table or a piece of art? Is it going to be you know, a picture frame where it captures a moment? I'm not just you know, cutting angles into a piece of wood. You know, I'm letting that, that piece of wood kind of like come out and project what it wants to be. That's his domain down there. I like to come in and he'll teach me things. We really play well off of each other. I do a lot of like the, uh, the big cuts and she does help with like the finishing. I'm a C-130 Loadmaster, Air, Air Force Reserve. So I joined at an older age than most of the other people in my flight. So we kind of put the woodworking business on hold, but it was always been there. Like I always had that drive for it. When I came back, it was like, all right, we're gonna focus on business, trying to grow that. It's not gonna be easy and it's not gonna be pretty sometimes but it's what our, our love and our passion mm -hmm. is. I was always in the reserve, so I didn't really have a lot of tenure in active duty. For about 10 months, I was away from home training. Yeah, that was hard for, for me. I thought it'd be fairly easy. I've always been very independent. When he was gone, there was just, you, it was just a piece was missing. I just missed his presence there and that support. It was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be not having that constant connection you know, with the, the person you just married. It was a hurdle, but it was one that we definitely were able to, to jump across. And, you know, and, well, I don't think it made, it, it made our love stronger for sure. Yeah, I agree. It was definitely a bonding experience for us. I was a special operations medic. Um, so we flew, went straight in Haiti right after the disaster. From there, I transitioned into nursing school and pursued my career into nursing. Personally, I wanted to serve going in, but whenever you get out, you find that you still have that inner feeling of wanting to serve. And 
How I found is through the community and through um, volunteering, Operation Safety Net downtown with the homeless. I can use my nursing skills and help take care of people that way. Me serving means giving back to this country that's given so much to us. I feel very proud. Seeing how the wood can kind of take shape, I mean, it's very fulfilling. I'm not a super artistic person, but I'm working on creating something beautiful that's going to make somebody happy. Through combat, you always hear about all the ugliness. Photography gave me the opportunity to see the beauty of what's around me again. I served in the Army as a communication specialist. Just a boy, I want to hear you talk. Look up, yeah, yeah, boy, yeah, boy. In the pre-9-11 military, the idea of deployments and stuff like that wasn't that high on the list. So that all changed on 9-11. We went to high alert. We didn't know how that was going to explode out within our theater of operations. So that really changed how we looked at things. When I came home, it was a much different scenario than when I left. When I got out, I hated being around new places. I hated being around people I didn't know or, or closed in spaces. You go from being in an environment where you don't know what the next five minutes will bring, let alone in the next day, to coming back here and things are a little bit different. You have to find yourself at your new normal. For me, family is super important when it comes to the transition period. My kids, whether they know it or not, they've continued to push me forward. You hear the phrase, I do it for the kids. I really had to do it for them. It gave me something to look forward to, to say, hey, you know, I need to be here. I need to, I need to fight this new fight. When I finally went and sought help at the VA and started talking to my therapist, the one question that she asked me was, what was something you liked doing before you deployed? And I always said, yeah, I dabble in taking photos. And she looked at me and she goes, why'd you stop? She goes, get back into it. But he knew he was mighty when that giant came on the scene. The one thing that's great about Pittsburgh is there's no shortcomings of opportunities for photography. But we knew to stand his ground. There's another veteran, uh, Brian, Brian and I get together and uh, we just go, we call them photo walks. See the, victory the best thing about taking pictures with Ben is the camaraderie. It gives us an opportunity to catch up and to talk and just to check in on each other while we're doing something we enjoy. See what it's doing? Like it's triggering a flash? Well, you probably a setting in there that you have to change. My favorite picture that Ben and I took was probably in the middle of the winter time. We went out and took pictures of the river whenever it was frozen across the river of the, uh, the bridges and the stadiums. It was good. One of the reasons I like Soldier and Sailor's Hall so much is you can walk these halls and it is like being amongst your friends. There's a walkway outside, and there's names on the bricks. Those are the names of veterans from the post-9-11 era from Pennsylvania who died. I always make an attempt to walk down that pathway at least once while I'm here. There's a name on one of the bricks, Chris Schiffer. Captain Schiffer and I were stationed 101st together. That's Chris. And the one thing about Chris that if you asked anyone who knew him was his smile was like electric. I try to remind people those bricks aren't financial donors. They donated the freedom. I'm a board member of Operation Troop Appreciation that does great things for veterans, both actively deployed and veterans that are different spots in their transition. It's really great to be part of an organization where, again, we see that need and we fill it. What does it mean for a child to say, that their mom and or dad served. It's important for me, to, to, for, for them to see what it costs to have the things they have. 
I'm hoping in the years to come when my kids look back and, and somebody says, tell me about your dad, they can look at them and say, you know, my dad helped people. All my experiences in the military and life condensed down into the body. Like, what can the body say about what it's been through, what it goes through? My work is figural because I believe in the patriotism of the human body. What does it mean for a child to say that their mom and or dad served? Would never get back to Iraq or Afghanistan again. I realized that there were other missions out there, other ways to serve. When we come back, sometimes the things that we see change us, and we have to heal ourselves, but it takes time. Just someone, someone understanding is the key to healing. You just come out with a better perspective of the world and what really matters.